Shalom. I want to start off by giving all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Rakan Kordash. Double honors to my elders and apostles and great millstone. Shalom to you men and you women out there who's doing this work diligently and cheaply keeping the faith, making your calling and your election sure. It's your brother, Kazak, a car coming back at you with another video through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai of the GMS company in Gary, Indiana. Hopefully this is edifying. I'm going to get right to the point over in um, Syrac chapter 2, and I'm going to start at verse 10. It says, look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? For whom did he ever despise that called upon him? All right. So what is this letting you know? This is faith right here. This is a faith booster, right, that I'm going into, that I'm reading about. Right here in verse 10, it lets you know that anyone who ever put their trust in the Lord, anyone who ever truly abided in his fear, Anybody that called upon him was never forsaken. He's asking this question to you, whoever is reading this. He's asking you to what? Do the test. Do the test yourself. You know, look and see who he ever forsaken that truly called upon him. And once you actually go and answer this question, you know, do the research, you'll find that no one on the face of the earth who truly abided in the field of the Lord was forsaken. No one, all right? The Lord has protected every single person who truly served him, who truly trusted in him, who truly uh, feared him, he saved them all, okay? You cannot find no one in history who the Lord has forsaken and truly called upon him, all right? So this is a faith booster, man. You have to believe this too as well, all right? So right chapter 2 and verse 10 again says, look at the generations of old and see did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded. He told you to go back and check the history, man. This is what the Lord is saying here. Go back and check the history and see whoever, whoever he despised that truly trusted in him. Who have he despised that truly trusted in him? You can't find it. All right? You can't. All right? You can go do the test yourself. Answer these questions yourself. So it can build up your faith, you know? Go into the history and see, you know? And that's what the Lord is telling you to do in verse 10. So right chapter two and verse 11 says, for the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering and very pitiful and forgiveth sins and saveth in time of affliction. So what's coming upon us? A, a Jacob's trouble, a great time of affliction, you know, famine, pestilence, you know, uh, neighbors spoiling each other's houses for goods. You know, a, a, a crazy time is coming upon the earth. All right. But the Lord is the one who saves his people in the time of affliction. He's the, he's the one that, that comes in and deliver you from your downfall, deliver you from your destruction. All right. Think about, think about the times when you were in your own lives, like right now. You know how the Lord delivered you from certain situations. You know, you know for a fact you couldn't deliver yourself from that situation. It had to be an outside power. It had to be an outside force to deliver you from that situation because you couldn't do it yourself. Hey, that's what the Lord is going to continue to do for you if you stay in the faith, if you repent. You know what I'm saying? And keep it moving. He's going to always protect you, man. Every situation that you don't know how to get out of, somehow you're going to find your way through it because of the Lord already ordained you to get through it all right he already put it in, in your story for you to overcome so you got to believe in the lord you got to believe in in this spirit you know what i'm saying believe in this truth what the lord gave us man okay because he's full of compassion he's full of mercy he's long suffering all right he forgives the sins man so turn to him and repent you don't got to say a lot of words or none of that, man. Just say the Lord's Prayer. Hey, the scriptures tell us that he know, what he, he know what we need before we even ask for it. So just say the Lord's Prayer and keep it going, man. Keep it moving. Don't, don't go up with many words and 
babble and shit like that. No, nah, man. You know, keep it short and precise. The Lord knows what you need before you ask for it, man. Verse 12, it says, Woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that go of two ways. Destruction, W-O-E. Be to fearful hearts, man. You, you don't have no faith if you're, if you're constantly dwelling in, in the fear of man. You know, what man can do to you. How they can lock you up and kill your body and things like that. No, man, you, you will destruction unto you. Why? Because you're gonna you're gonna try to accommodate that man, right? So he don't do these things to you. We don't. If when you're in this truth, you know that you've been here before. You know this is this is your last wicked, sinful, uh, uh, regeneration. You know the re, uh, this is your last sinful temple. You know before you get the new temple that will never go off. You know, hopefully I'm a part of that number. Hopefully the people that's listening is a part of that number. You know, this is our last vessel of destruction. You know, we want to be up there with the Lord. Hey, to be absent in the flesh is to be present with the Lord. You know, we want our we want our bodies that's in heaven, man, to be on earth. You know, that's what we want. We want our heavenly bodies on earth. You know, that's what we want, man. So we, in our minds, we, we, we're, not, we're not thinking about that fear. Now, according to the flesh, you know, you have some fearful moments because you're in the flesh. But when you occupy it in the spirit, hey, there's no fear in prophecy because it's going to happen. Whether you like it, accept it, believe it or not, it's going to happen. So this is Sirach 2 and verse 12. It says, woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands and a sinner that go two ways. Hey, Amen. You're going, to, you're going back and forth, you know, um, um, not on the correct path of the Lord, but, you know, uh, going to different doctrines, you know, constantly adding sin unto sin. you going, you going two ways. You're going the opposite from the Lord. And there's many paths that lead to destruction, but it's only one narrow path that leads to salvation. You know, you got to be on a path of righteousness, constantly repenting from your sins instead of adding sin unto sin, you know. This is Sarah chapter 2 and verse 13. It says, Woe, W O E, unto him that is faint hearted. So, destruction unto you if you are faint hearted. You know? Destruction. Let's get a, uh, let's get that definition faint hearted. It's probably not. Mm -hmm. Let me get a definition of thing out here with the proper context. Tender, saw, delicate. Weak, weak of heart, timid, you know, I think it's a rock. Rack, adjective, uh, tender. So the woe unto them with a weak heart, <laughs> a weak of heart, timid. Not saying weak heart like, you're, like you're, your heart is actually like weak. It's talking about your mind. You're, you're, you're weak minded, right? You don't have faith. All right, faith is the gas to all of this. If you don't have faith, of course you're gonna be delicate, you're gonna be weak, tender, soft, right? You don't have faith in the prophecies, right? You see Esau, he, he's, he's got guns and weapons and things like that. You trust him in that because you can see it. But guess what faith is? Let's get it and do the run, not do the run of me, um, uh, Hebrews real quick, and then we're gonna come back to that. This is what faith is, man. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse one. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, all right? This is what faith is, man, all right? The faith is what? Us hoping to be part of the elect. Faith is us going out on the highways and the byways, trusting that the Lord will protect us and allow us to go back home to our families, you know what I'm saying, until he return, you know? Right. Uh, faith is knowing when you step out and, and you don't have no food, you don't have... You know what I'm saying? The things of this world anymore because you did not accept the MOCB. So now you're a pilgrim. 
Faith is knowing that the Lord will deliver you from that situation. All right? Faith is knowing that the Lord got you regardless. Faith is knowing, like we started with in Syrac chapter 2 and verse 10, faith is knowing that the Lord will never forsake you if you truly trust in him. Okay? That's it, man. That's what faith is, the evidence of things not seen. Hey, believing in the Lord, fearing in Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, is faith. All right? Why would you fear in him if you don't believe he exists? It doesn't wake up. All right? You believe he exists. That's why you fear him. That's why you That's why you go and do the things he say to the best of your ability, man. So the scripture says, Woe unto him who is faint-hearted, who is weak, who is timid. Right? When things come upon you, you shake. You, you, you fall. You know what I'm saying? You, you're like a leaf that falls when the wind hits you. You know? The Lord said, Woe, destruction unto you. This is Sirach chapter 2 and verse 13. It says, Woe, destruction unto him that is faint-hearted, weak, timid, right? For he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. So where is your faith? If you believe that you will not be defended, and you're right. If you believe that you will be defended, you're right too. It's according to your faith, man. The scripture says here, For he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. Okay? So, hey, if you don't believe that the Lord will protect you, you're right. He won't. He won't protect you. But for those who truly fear the Lord, for those who abide in his fear, hey, the Lord is going to protect you because you can't find nobody on earth or who have died who truly called upon the Lord and he forsake. You cannot, you cannot find them. The Lord has a 100% track record on having a back of of everybody who truly trusts in him. Period. Period. Verse 14, it says, Woe, W-O-E, destruction unto you that have lost patience. And what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? What will ye do when the Lord visit you, man? Will you, will you be found repenting? Or will you be found caught up in your folly. What will you do when the Lord visits you? Hey, he's coming. It says right here, what will ye do when the Lord visit you? It didn't say if the Lord visit you. It said when. So he's coming. <laughs> he's going to visit you. What will you do? What will you do? Will you, will you be found, like I said, repenting or found in your folly? Woe unto you that have lost patience. Hey, this, this is the patience and the faith of the saints, right? To patiently wait to, uh, to be delivered, to, to wait for our enemies to go into captivity, all right? Let me see here. Get a precept. Just came to mind. Revelation 14 and 12. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 12. It says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Yahweh and the faith of Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. All right. So this is the patience of the saints. We, we select it. This is the patience of the saints. Right. They are doing what? They are keeping the commandments of Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls God, and they're keeping the faith of Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. Okay. So that's what they're doing two things, all right? They're doing two things. And the Lord said, woe unto you who have lost patience. So if you are not keeping the faith of Yahweh Shai, if you are not keeping the commandments of the Lord to the best of your ability, destruction is coming towards you, okay? And the only way to do this is to constantly repent from your actions, right? Constantly repent. Find out what you're doing against the Lord and change it to the best of your ability. Okay? Let's go back to that side right two at the bottom of it. So right here. It says, side right chapter 2 of verse 15. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. And they that love him will keep his ways. Alright? So this is what the elect are doing. They are they are obeying the Lord's word and they are keeping his ways. They're loving his ways, man. All right. 
This is uh, Sarah chapter 2, verse 16. It says, They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well, pleasing unto him. And they that love him shall be feed, filled with the law. Okay? So, hey, the scriptures tell us in 1 John chapter 5, and verse 3, that if you love God, if you love your Yahweh, you will keep his commandments. It tells you what love is. Love is keeping the commandments of the Lord. All right? That's how you show the Lord that you love him. You can't give him a hug, give him a big hug. No, you got to show through actions, right? You can't go up there and hug the sky. No, man. No, your actions, your deeds, your obedience is what shows the Lord that you love him, you know? So right chapter 2 and verse 17, it says, They that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts, meaning their minds, and humble their souls in his sight. So what will you do when the Lord visits you? What should you do when the Lord visits you? They go to answer. You will, you will prepare your mind. You will humble your soul in his sight. You will humble your soul, man. You will repent. Know that you are filthy. Know that there is no man on this earth that sinneth not. So you got to constantly repent. All right? Over and over again. The scriptures tell us that the simple thought process of foolishness is sin. Okay? So, hey, you, we are filthy. We are caught up in these minds that we cannot control. Thoughts come in our heads that we cannot control. But you got to repent and keep it moving, man. You know, don't fall susceptible to the flesh. Constantly move forward, keeping the ways of the Lord, loving the ways of the Lord until the end. All right. Once again, in Sirach chapter 2, verse 17. <clears throat> they that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts, meaning their minds, their law, and humble their souls in his sight. Verse 18, saying, we will fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of men, for his majesty is, so is his mercy. Okay? This is what we what we uh, have to do, Yasharala, to, to be able to be delivered. All right? You want mercy from the Lord? You got to love his ways. You want mercy from the Lord, you got to do what he said. The Lord prefers obedience rather than sacrifice. Okay? So he wants you to be obedient. He don't want burnt sacrifices now, man. He wants actions. He wants you to be obedient. Yahweh was that perfect land of a sacrifice. No, he wants you to, he wants your actions. He wants to see what you're doing. Are you repenting? Are you praying? Are you fasting? Are you doing what he said to the best of your ability? Show through your deeds. Hey, what the scripture says, let us not love in word, but in deed. Roughly paraphrasing that. Okay, so hopefully this was edifying. I want to end it by giving all I, Bahashem, Rapah, Kwadash. Double honors once again to my elders and apostles at Great Millstone. Shalom once again to the elect. Don't let your sins weigh you down. Don't let your iniquities affect themselves. That's what they want to do. It's our job to keep moving forward. Shalom.